Hello Australia and welcome back to The Tribute Show. A big thank you for all your feedback and your emails due to last week's episode. We promise to bring you another killer episode today. Let's get the ball rolling with Alan and the Johnny Cash Tribute Show. Well, my daddy left home when I was three. He didn't leave very much for my ma and me. Just this old guitar and an empty bottle of booze. Now, I don't blame him because he run in here, but the meanest thing that he ever did was before he left, he went and named me Sue. Hell, he must have thought that it was quite a joke because he got a lot of laughs from a lots of fun. It seems I had to fight my whole life through. But some gal would giggle and I'd get red and then some guy would laugh and I'd bust his head and tell you, life ain't easy for a boy named Sue. Well, I grew up quick and I grew up mean My fist got hard and my wits got keen I'd roam from town to town to hide my shame But I made me a vow to the moon and the stars That I'd search the honky-tonks and bars And kill that man that gave me that awful name Well, it was Gatlinburg in mid-July I just hit town and my throat was dry I thought I'd stop and have myself a brew at an old saloon on a street of mud There at a table dealing stud Sat the dirty mangy dog that named me Sue Yeah, I knew that snake was my old sweet dad From a worn-out picture that my mother had had I knew that scar on his cheek and his evil eye Well, he was big and bent and gray and old I looked at him and my blood ran cold And I said, my name is Sue But to my surprise, he come up with a knife and cut off a piece of my ear. Well, then I busted a chair right across his teeth and we crashed through the wall and into the street, kicking and a gouging in the mud and the blood and the beer. Well, I tell you, I fought tougher men, but I really can't remember when. He kicked like a mule and he bit like a crocodile. For all the U2 fans out there, Michael, who fronts the U2 tribute show, contacted us not that long ago and send us the following footage. Take a look at this. All right. Adam Clayton on the bass. Uno, dos, tres, guitar sing! Jungle is your head, can't rule your heart. You're feeling so strong, but then all your eyes are wide and all your soul can be bought your mind and wonder. Go, the sparkle as the bullets play rock and roll. 
state you're in. Can't afford to lose, gotta strive to win. Just remember, nothing stays the same. It just depends on how you play the game. Welcome back to the Tribute Show and I'm sitting with the beautiful Wendy Stapleton, a woman who has talent and she has it in abundance. Wendy, welcome to the show. <laughs> what can I say? With an intro like that, thank you very much. Wendy, you started off as a youngster learning uh, traditional ballet, tap, song, etc. And you made your debut at age nine at Her Majesty's Theatre. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was like for you? Well, um, I still remember it vividly. I mean, of course, it's an amazing thing. Uh, at any age to be able to uh, do a, a big theatre production. But at that age, um, well, I think there were six kids in each cast and there were three uh, casts because back then, and I think the rules are pretty similar these days, if you're under 16, you can't perform shows in a row. So they have to have three casts of kids, which um, wasn't very great for the rest of the people in the show because they had 18 little brats running around. <laughs> I think we were pretty good kids. It was wonderful. Um, obviously, you know, we'd all been trained. Um, all of us had been learning singing and dancing and tap and the whole biz for a long time. And also a lot of the kids that were in the show, we also did a show on Channel 9 once a week called The Tarak Show. I can move you forward to 1979, you were signed with Mushroom Records of course and you had Wendy and the Rockets and your hit single which reached number two at the time. You were touring Australia and obviously overseas. Yeah, we, um, well, we, we toured like most bands before you get signed up, you, you work around a lot so we were playing for quite a, a couple of years before um, we started releasing records and then when we had enough material for an album we recorded a live album here in Australia at the pubs, all the different little pubs and sort of um, got a live album together. And then we went to London to record our first album, real album. And um, that was amazing because um, actually most of the guys in the band had never been outside Australia. So just being there was amazing. And as you can imagine, like all of those great streets, Kings Road in Chelsea, and that were all of the amazing looking I think back then there was lo lots of um, punks and Mohicans and everyone just looked amazing. So w we were like kids in a lolly shop. And, and you obviously work with uh, ZZ Top, Hall & Oates, Brian Adams to name a few. Yeah. How do you think you were received overseas? Well, we were support. So, um, the first tour we did after the album was finished was with Brian Adams and Brian was only starting out himself. Uh, so it was, you know, I guess you could say we're sort of kids, you know, early 20s. Um, and we, uh, we were just so excited to be going on a European tour. So Brian's tour was wonderful. It was um, sort of like big venues, but more like 2,000 seaters or 1500. That was an amazing uh, time. And then we came back to England and then ZZ Top chose us to support them. That was a whole different ball game. That was 15,000. It was like Rod Laver arenas every night. All over Germany and Switzerland and France and uh, then England and Scotland. Uh, and uh, that, they were wacky. 
<laughs> I'm sure they were. And you really are a jack of all trades. You've been on television, you've made a movie. I know you've been on Neighbours, obviously, and um, Blue Healers. I think you played Delta Goodrum's mum on Neighbours. I did. Which would have been a... I did. It was... Um, that, that sort of came out of the blue. I was... Um, Doing a show, which I'm, I'm probably going to start, we'll probably start doing it again at the end of this year with Deb Byrne, who is about to start in a new show on Channel 9, I think. Uh, Deb Byrne and Nikki Nichols. And so we were doing this all around Australia. And just out of the blue, I got a call from Channel 10 to go for an audition. And um, I've got to be honest, you know, you're a certain age, you don't really watch young kids' shows. and I really didn't know that much about Delta. Smack me, just smack me. We, we are a different, uh, we are a different age, age group, yes. And what they used to do was in the morning they would have a car pick me up and then pick Delta up so that we could go to work together so that we could chat and get to know each other because we were playing mother and daughter. But you couldn't get a better match, two singers, you know, mother and daughter. What a great match. <laughs> Mind you, the character in the show that I played was nuts. Like she was really out there. So fun to play. Fun to play, but really. So I guess that's fun. So in 2006, if we can move a little bit more forward, you were part of the big countdown spectacular. Now that would have been a blast from the past, obviously. 28 plus performers on stage. Oh, more than that, I think. Um, well, I don't know. You could be right. There were, there were a lot of us. On the road, the whole um, entourage, including all of the crew, the roadies and um, everyone, there were 180 of us. Oh. So every time we got on a plane, there were 180 of us. Um, that was so well received though, everyone loved it. It was amazing and, and a lot of us hadn't seen each other since we were in our 20s. And then you, you, you go forward and we're all in our 40s or 50s. Um, and uh, you know, some people hadn't changed at all and some people had changed a lot. I don't mean um, so much as people, but a lot of people looked quite different. A lot of people had um, gone through really hard times yeah. and, um, and it was wonderful to be back doing what they loved. Um, we had a great time. If you could give one piece of advice to anyone out there starting out in the music industry or in the acting industry, what would that be? Gee, um, it's, it's hard because the industry is very different now. We were very lucky in, um, we were signed up in 79, but really most of our time was in the 80s. And as you know, there were bands in every pub on every corner. You could, you could work every night of the week. Well, the pokies have killed that now, so. Thank you very much, yeah. Um, but, you know, not to moan and groan, there are, there are venues starting to open up again for young musos and stuff like that. But, um, well, basically my advice would be uh, just go with your heart. Um, you've got to try and um, suss out who's really out for looking after you and who's out for looking after themselves, which is tough because when you're young, you're so excited about everything that all you want to do is get on. So basically, anything that anyone promises you, you're tempted to sort of go, OK, OK, I'll do it, I'll do it. Wise words from a very wise lady, ladies and gentlemen. What can I say? It's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege to have this beautiful lady on the show. Thank you very much, Wendy, Thank for your time. Thank you for time. having me. Thanks, Tony. Look for the dates on the web after the break. We'll be back with more on The Tribute Show. The Trivia time. Who inspired Adele in the 90s? You won't believe it when you find out the answer. We'll see you after the break. So who inspired UK singer Adele in the 90s? Who was it? I told you you wouldn't believe your ears. The Spice Girls.
And that brings us to a close of another killer episode of The Tribute Show. We're going to lead you out with next week's international artist, Leanne Taylor. Who is Leanne Taylor? She's an Adele tribute artist. Have a listen to this and see you next week. i